Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't been here in a while. I took a long, long break. Um, I truly intended to like fully just up and leave. This wasn't my intention to just take a break, but I fully felt like I needed to. Um, and honestly, the, the longer it, it has been since I last did my last stream, the more I was like, I don't know if I made the right decision. <laughs> like, I just kind of felt like this kind of gut feeling like I was missing y'all. I was missing these streams. I was missing doing all of these. Um, I was missing you guys. And I don't know, like, as the weeks went on and all these trailers kept dropping, I was just like, oh, man, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. I got opinions. I got things I want to say. And so I guess here I am. <laughs> I didn't last long. <laughs> I really intended to just walk away, sail into the sunset, and um, that didn't happen. I guess my gut or my conscience or my brain or whatever told me, you know what? Stop being dumb. Let's just go back and do more streams. I don't know. Um, but how are you guys? I missed you guys so, so, so much. Hi, Jessica. Uh, oh my god, not a Selena Gomez break! No! No! Not a Selena Gomez break! Oh man, you roasted me! Oh damn! Um, hi CD Woods, hi Natanya, hi Barbie and Ken Edits, hi Ufta, hi Marla the Big Tourist, hi Metronoma, hi, hi Synth, hi Michael, hi Stephanie, hi JC, hi Pastel, hi Blackstar, hi Willow, hi Whimson, Davy Thomas, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, so glad you're back. Oh, thank you, Davy. Uh, see, I honestly seeing all of your comments on my last video and then on Twitter and then I've been looking at the chat. You guys are so kind. I've been like just enjoying all these nice comments saying you guys miss me, you want me back, and I won't lie, it was partially why I was like, oh man, I feel bad kind of leaving y'all. But yeah, okay, so. I decided I wanted to come back. Oh my god, Shelly, thank you again for the super chat. You're always so generous on this channel. I appreciate it so much. Um, welcome back so much. <laughs> Talking about starting with Dune. I know, like, I couldn't come, like, not come back and not talk about Dune, you know? I talked about Dune so much last year. Like, I feel like I've been Dune's number one fan on this app. <laughs> and I, I, it would have felt weird not actually getting to review it. So of course I'm reviewing Dune and I'm going to review The Last Airbender. So on Friday, because I am going to have another stream on Friday, I'm going to review The Last Airbender, at least the first couple episodes that I can watch. So that's going to be fun. Um, Paris, oh, you saved my 2024. Thank you for coming back. Oh, hi, Paris. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Hi, Miss Olsen. Hi, Ahsoka. Hi, Jimmy Craft Style. Um, oh, you changed the way I look at movie media. Every time you look at a trailer, you think of me? Oh, that's so kind. You guys are so kind. Wow. Some of the nicest people. Uh, oh, thank you, Web Slinger. Um, Jessica says, we did miss you, but if you ever feel like you need to leave, you understand. Thank you for guys, you guys for understanding why I might need a break. YouTube is a very all-encompassing, very tough, hard job. It's deceiving. It looks easy on the surface, but it's really not. <laughs> it takes a lot of work, hard hard work, and a lot of effort. Um, and sometimes you can just be burnt out, and I think I was definitely just burnt out. Um, and I missed such a busy month! Oh my god, February! It was like so freaking dead for like the last couple of months last year, and then January was dead. And then February was like, oh yeah! We got this big trailer, this big trailer, this big news, this big news. And I'm just like, really? Y'all waited until I left to drop all this stuff? So, you know, we have a lot to cover. This might be a long live stream because I have literally, I'm going to try to cover all of the biggest news stories that I missed from the past, past month and the biggest trailer. So we're going to cover the Deadpool trailer, the Wicked trailer, Twisters. We're going to talk about Moana. We're going to talk about... Uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Really, I have like a million tabs open. And yes, we're going to talk about Madam Web too. Oh my god, Madam Web. <laughs> what a movie! What a movie, man. Uh, who has seen Madam Web, by the way? 
Um, oh, Natanya, I miss you, miss being your mod. Hi, Natanya. I'm glad to see you back as well. Um, but yeah, who has seen Madam Web? I saw it on uh, Saturday, and I gave you guys my thoughts in a few videos on my Twitter page. If you guys don't follow my Twitter page, you should go do that. Um, but I, I gave you a quick, a quick snippet of my thoughts. I thought that movie was atrocious, <laughs> to say the least. I have never been in a movie theater with so much laughter, where the, the laughter was not with the movie, it was at the movie. Like, I'm not kidding, there was this one guy who was like full-on belly laughing the entire movie. Like, at every dumb line, at every dumb scene, it was just, it was like I was at a comedy. But it was like, the movie was very clearly not supposed to be a comedy, but my audience was treating it like a comedy. It was just one of the best, like, theater experiences I've had in recent memory, just because the audience was just living it up. Oh, it was great. It was so great. In a way, and when I mean great, I mean it was terrible. But, like, so terrible, it was great. Um... Ariana's biggest fan. You've been a member for four months. You never even stopped being a member. You're so amazing. Hey, I miss you so much. Can't wait to see you are back. So excited. I'm literally in happy tears right now. Oh my gosh. Not you crying. Don't make me cry, y'all. That's so sweet. Um, Nicholas Wilson, I missed you as well. Welcome home, Brittany. Oh, that's very kind of you. You guys are so sweet. These comments. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys are gonna make me cry. Um... Who did see Madam Web, though? You know what? Maybe I should do a poll. I, I haven't done a poll, obviously, in a while. So let's do a poll. All right. Uh, who has seen Madam Web? I'm going to say me. And then not interested. And then, you know what? I'm going to say me loved it. And then me hated it. Uh, waiting for streaming. That's the last option. All right, adding a poll. Oh my gosh, is that from Dee Dee? Welcome back. Oh, thank you, Dee Dee, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Always so kind. Thank you, Dee Dee. Um, Oh, Alden didn't think it was that bad. Interesting, interesting. Um, how's Prancer? Prancer is sleeping right now, so uh, I don't want to mess with him. Um, you know what? Bal Bal Baldicini? Bal Bald Baldici? You asked a question about making regular videos. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm coming back in a sort of part-time capacity. It's just going to be the streams. It's just going to be the streams, like, probably three times a week, like I was doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's it. I don't think I'm doing regular videos. Um, it's just going to be the streams because I enjoy doing this podcast. I enjoy talking to you guys. But if you're here for the regular videos, I'm sorry. I just cannot. I'm not here for that. I am, I'm a YouTuber who likes streaming, not a YouTuber who likes editing. <laughs> that is who I am. Um, of course I'm coming back for Dune 2. Y'all, I'm totally reviewing Dune 2. Uh, Nicholas says you were excited because you knew it'd be bad. Not, I mean, to be fair, I did know Madam Web was going to be bad. I mean, let's talk about it. Why don't we just get straight into it? Let me do the poll real quick and then we'll finally just start the actual stream. So, uh, let's get to the poll. So I asked, who has seen Madam Web? 4% of you saw it and loved it. Interesting, now 5%. 5% of you saw it but hated it. 63% uh, of you are just not interested. And 27% are waiting for streaming. Okay, so most of you are just not interested. Totally fair. Seems like you guys are in the majority, as you will see. But a lot of you are waiting for streaming, probably to laugh at it at home. And I totally don't blame you at all. Um, ending the poll. Um, okay, I'm glad you guys are happy about the live streams. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, all right. So getting into the first thing. So we're going to talk about box office since I missed that. So yes, Madam Web. 
<laughs> we have to talk about what's going on with Madam Web because I'm not the only one that did not care for this movie. I mean, pretty much every critic out there has been like, yo, this movie sucks. And not just like regular sucks, but like, I'm worried for the future of cinema kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like Chris Stuckman, oh my god, he never reviews anything bad. And even he had to be like, y'all, I'm sure they tried. <laughs> I've never seen him make a whole video about, like, you know, it's hard to make a movie. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but, like, it's just so funny. Like, the, re the reviews for this movie aren't just bad. They're, like, apocalyptically bad. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is one of the, the reviews that I read that I was like, you know what? You're selling me on this movie. Okay, the disaster that is Madame Web should be studied by scientists for years to come. Hilariously clunky ADR. Lifeless characters. A story with no stakes or tension. Maybe the worst comic book movie villain ever? Pick your poison, very little works. The plus side, you'll laugh a lot. You know what? This is the tweet. This is the review that got me pumped to go see this movie. I love a good movie that's so bad it's funny. Like, you know, it's kind of in the same vein. It, you know, I can see this movie kind of becoming a cult classic in the same way that, like, Room, or The Room, not Room, but The Room, became a cult classic. Like, I can totally see that. Just because it has that same awkward energy, the same, like, quotable, memeable lines. I could totally see this becoming like a cult classic in the future. It's, it's that kind of movie. I did see a super chat. Marty Martin, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Glad to see you back, Brittany. Big fan. Did you receive my email? Uh, I will check. I don't really check my email. I gotta be real with you. I don't check my email, but I will check. Thank you, Marty. Um, also, we have Jojo Rod who became a member again. Thank you so much, Jojo Rod. Um, what did you guys think of the movie, by the way? I've told you a bit about my thoughts, but did you guys think it was really that bad? Oof Dust says Dakota Johnson is a pretty terrible actress. You know what? I will say Dakota Johnson is an interesting actress. I don't know if she's good. I don't know if she's bad. But she's interesting to watch on screen. That's how I would describe her. She has the most unique like, the most unique line readings I've heard from any actress, and I just can't judge if it's bad or it's just, like, you know, totally her, you know? She kind of exists in her own, like, lane in a way. Um, Pe Jal Pedro says, was the scene with the guy running from the train as awkward in the trailer? Yeah, it was. That, the villain is the worst part about this movie. He is comically bad. He got the most laughs in my audience, and it didn't help that they kept doing these visions where you would see him doing the most goofiest thing, and it would be in slow-mo kind of sometimes, and it would just be like, it would amp the goofiness, and you're just like, what is going on here? Are you serious? Is this movie serious? Because it's a very unserious movie. Um, Valerie P, thank you so much for the super chat. It makes total sense it's set in the 2000s. I mean, yeah, it, it does, in a way. I do feel like some of the references to the early 2000s was a bit forced, like the toxic scene. Like, what was going on with the toxic scene? That was another scene that my audience started laughing, because, like, you could tell they were really playing up, like, Britney, Britney Spears' toxic song. It kind of reminded me of that episode of Doctor Who, if anyone has seen Doctor Who, <laughs> where they called toxic uh, a classic, and I don't know, that just reminded me of that, but anyway. Um, she is the same girl from Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, she is. So she she keeps her clothes on for this one, though. Um, I know the chimes. I'm so sorry. You guys are going to hear the chimes. They never went away. Uh, but anyway, you want to know how bad this movie was? Well, apparently, <laughs> a major theatrical chain says that they could see the Madam Web advanced purchase sales declining in real time as buyers were refunding their tickets on opening night. That's awful. Like, how bad is your movie? How bad are the reviews that the theater can literally see people rec like returning their tickets in real time? I mean, I can believe it. I can believe it with this movie. I mean, that's really embarrassing, though. And then you have poor Dakota Johnson, who, 
you know, she was a trooper. She went out there and she still promoted the movie, even though she could, you could tell she clearly didn't care for it. But like, when you're, when the star of your movie is promoting your film by being like, y'all, I'm worried for the sake of, for the future of the industry. <laughs> like, that's how she was promoting this movie. She was like, y'all, it's really bleak out here. <laughs> it's like she was preemptively trying to excuse herself from being in this big movie. Like, I tried, y'all. It's the industry's fault, not mine. Like, that's kind of what this, this quote here kind of sounds like to me. This is what she said. Dakota Johnson says it's really effing bleak in the industry. It is majorly... Oh, it's majorly disheartening. The people who run streaming platforms don't trust creative people or artists know what's going to work and that it's just going to make us implode. It's really heartbreaking. It's just effing so hard. It's so hard to get anything made. Everyone who makes decisions is afraid. They want to do the safe thing and the safe thing is really boring. I mean, again, if I could just read between the lines here, she's blaming the industry, the state of the industry for how bad her movie is. So she can like take some of the heat off of her. And honestly, I think she's right because I don't know anyone who would disagree with this statement. I've been saying for months, really for a year now, that the main problem with Hollywood is that we have a bunch of people in charge that don't know what they're doing. So, I mean, it's true. They need to give more like creatives and like power, like creatives that actually know what they're doing. Um, so I agree with this statement, but it's crazy to me, like actually wild. That she's promoting her movie by being like, yeah, the state of the industry is dark right now. Because <laughs> even she knows. Even she knows. Um, Alexander P. Thank you so much, Alexander Padilla. Uh, hey, Brittany, is this Gillum? Is this film going to ruin Dakota Johnson and Sydney Sweeney and Celeste O'Connor and Isabella Merced's career? Glad to have you back. Well, I'm glad you know the names of all of the girls. That's really great. Um, I don't know if it's going to hurt their careers, to be honest. I think that everyone is probably going to blame Sony because they already had Morbius. And I think people are blaming the whole Sony Spider-Man universe strategy more than any of these actresses because, again, they made Morbius and they're about to make freaking the, what's it called? The Craven the Hunter? Like, these movies look dead on arrival. I mean, dead on, I mean... Yeah, the Craven the Hunter movie definitely looks dead on arrival to me. And all of these movies kind of have the same weird feel to them, at least by the trailer. So I feel like if anyone's going to get blamed for how badly this movie did, it's probably going to be Sony and not the actresses. But that's my guess. This probably will kill the whole Spider-Man cinematic universe thing that they were building. At least I hope it does. It should kill it. Um, yeah, Sony is definitely to blame. Um, also, <laughs> Dakota Johnson got new representation. She got new representation after the Madam Web trailer came out. <laughs> That's how badly she just does, like, does not want to be associated with this movie. Like, even she knows it's terrible. And, I mean, honestly, another reason why I think Dakota Johnson will probably make it out fine from this is that her press tour went insanely viral she got a lot of really viral clips off of that press tour again just because she has a very interesting presence and i think that people really gravitate towards her which is why i think she'll probably be cast again so if anything i feel like this probably raised dakota johnson's profile a bit but maybe i don't know for the best reasons <laughs> i do like dakota johnson though i don't have a problem with her i i think she's interesting to watch on screen so I'll, I'll watch the next Dakota Johnson pick. I don't mind. Yeah, she'll be fine. Um, Naturally Spiritual says, Hollywood needs to leave superheroes alone for five years and come back with Batman Beyond or Static Shock. Yeah, I think the super... If Deadpool... We're going to talk about Deadpool soon. But if Deadpool doesn't do the numbers that they want it to do, I think the superhero genre needs a break for a good, good while. Yes, she is a Nepo baby, so she's one of them. Um, I mean, the movie only opened to about $25 million in the first six days. So that's a pretty massive flop, especially when it had a hundred million budget. So it's not making its money back. It's definitely losing money. It's embarrassing all around. Although, although I will say that's quite a lot for a movie like this. Honestly, I think a lot of this is curiosity. <laughs> like people like me who like seeing movies that are so bad that they're funny. 
I feel like that's got to be a good majority of this total because I don't think most people are going to see this movie in the second weekend. I think it's going to drop like a, a rock second weekend most likely. Um, Cheetah Viper says, I'm scared. Static was so good. I don't want them ruining it. Yeah, I don't know about that. It, that I did watch the trailer today. It reminded me of Guardians. It reminded me of Guardians quite a lot, actually, which is not a bad thing. But it looked like it could be directed by James Gunn, which is funny. Um, the writers should be ashamed. Well, aren't, aren't the same writers for Madam Web the same writers as what's his face, uh, Morbius? Like, I don't know why they thought, oh yeah, Morbius is a masterpiece. Let's get the same writers again. That's why I think Sony is entirely going to be blamed for this, or at least they should. Um, now, One Love did beat it, the Bob Marley movie. It got like 46 million opening weekend. This is worldwide. So good for this film. I haven't seen it yet. In fact, I'm actually seeing it after this live stream. So that's what I'm doing tonight. But yeah, I mean, good for this movie. I'm glad that at least another musical biopic is doing well. A lot of them haven't been. I think it's really fascinating to see which celebrities still have pull and which celebrities don't. Um, because Bohemian Rhapsody made almost a billion dollars, but we've had like a Whitney Houston biopic, we've had an Elton John biopic, we've had a lot of biopics recently, and none of them were able to be Bohemian Rhapsodies. And this won't either, but at least it's doing okay. It's doing better than those other movies, I think, so it's doing all right. It's doing all right. We are going to talk about uh, Fantastic Four as well. Did anyone see Bob Marley's movie? I haven't seen it, but like I said, I'm seeing it soon. Um, seems like not a lot of you might have seen it. I'll tell you what I think after I see it, though, but I'm going to move on. Now, looking ahead to Dune. Oh my gosh, Dune. You guys know I'm excited for Dune. <laughs> have I mentioned I'm excited for Dune? I don't know if I've said that before. Um, but the box office tracking is only at about $65 million domestically, which is okay. If not like amazing but it's not terrible it's at least better than the first one but they're saying it's pacing ahead of oppenheimer um we'll see i think maybe this movie is probably going to open not crazy high but kind of medium but then maybe have long legs because i think word of mouth is going to be really good so that's my prediction on how dune is going to perform i don't think it's going to have like a majorly huge opening just because just based off of what a lot of you guys have told me not all, not everyone liked the first Dune as much as I did. I think y'all are crazy, but I know not everyone liked it. So I think this movie is going to have to depend on word of mouth. So let's see how it does when it actually opens. But 65 million is, it's okay. It's okay. Are you guys planning to see Dune? You better. Are you guys seeing it? Thoughts on the Dune popcorn bucket. I kind of want one. I'm not going to get one, but I kind of want one. <laughs> Maybe I will. I don't know. I never get those popcorn buckets because I'm like, what am I going to do with it afterward? But I don't know. The Dune popcorn bucket is quite special. I might get that one. Um, okay, Editing Geek, you haven't seen Dune 1? All right. Uh, Anna Bear, you're waiting for streaming. What? Um, Anna Bear says you love Zendaya. Yeah. Honestly, I'm just glad that Zendaya is going to be in this one a lot more. Apparently, she's like the lead of the film. That's what all the reviews are saying. Jojo Rod, going to see this weekend. Uh, what do you mean you're going to see it this week? It doesn't come out yet. Oh, Danny's getting the bucket. Comes out on your birthday. Happy almost birthday. Um, only seeing the originals. So, like I'm saying, a lot of you in my comments either have not seen the first Dune or did not care for it. So, I don't know how this movie's going to do, because I really like it, but I do acknowledge that it's very niche and not something that everyone's going to like. So, we'll see. I think it'll do okay. It'll probably do better than the first Dune, but probably not a crazy lot more. I don't think it's coming close to a billion, is what I'm saying. Um, which is, I saw another report, like, several weeks ago that said that Hollywood hopes this movie makes a billion, and I just don't see it anymore, unfortunately. I don't think that there's enough interest, but it'll do okay. It'll do okay. Now, a movie that I'm worried about is Joker, because why in the world does Joker have a $200 million budget? What? Another thing we've been talking about is the fact that these budgets are getting insane, 
why does Joker 2, a movie that's going to be a musical, and we know how musicals have been going lately, why did that get a $200 million budget when the first one was only $60 million? If they can make $60 million work, they can make it work again for the sequel. Or at least maybe $80 million, I don't know. But $200? 200 200 I mean, I was already thinking that Joker 2 was probably going to make a little bit less than Joker 1 just because it is a musical and the first one was such a novelty. But now, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, if it doesn't make a billion dollars, that's probably going to be a disappointment because they definitely greenlit $200 million thinking that this movie could make a billion dollars. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. What do you guys think about this? Do you think the $200 million budget is warranted? Do you guys see this making a billion dollars like the first one? Yes, or why or why not? Oh no, Free Rocket Man, you're not hyped for this movie at all. Why not? I'm actually really excited for this. You guys know I love musicals. We're going to talk about Wicked in a minute. Um, but I, I'm still excited for it. Hollywood is tripping. Yeah. I don't know why. No movie. Unless it's like an Avengers movie, needs to cost two hundred million, in my opinion. I think that's ridiculous. It's crazy that that's become the standard. Um, Nicholas says I've also recently found out it's a semi trend to hate on musicals. Oh, it's a trend, all right. The Mean Girls musical showed that. Although, the Wonka movie did well, so I don't know. I hope it does well. I hope Wicked does well too, because I don't want musicals to die. I think musicals are on their last breath right now if Joker 2 and Wicked don't do well. We probably won't be getting any musicals for a long time. So I hope these musicals do very well. Um, yeah, Anna Bear says, total waste of money. Interesting. I don't know if it's a waste. Maybe we'll see the money on screen. We haven't really seen a trailer yet. We just have this new image, which I think looks really good. I really like Lady Gaga's hair. I think she looks cool. Um, but anyway... Yeah, I think that's that's quite a high budget. So we'll see if they'll they'll reach that billion dollar mark that the first one did. Anyway, any other thoughts on Joker before we move on? <coughs> it seems most of you agree with me that this budget is insane because it definitely is. I mean, I understand raising the budget a little bit for the sequel, but they went crazy overboard, like well over double. Like this is over triple. This is over triple the amount they spent on the first one. That's insane. Um, but anyway, Dee Dee says Avengers don't even need that budget. Well, I think they need at least $100 million for the cast alone, so that's why I said Avengers movies. Uh, but moving on to more existential, I guess, terrible possible news. AI is blowing up right now. <clears throat> Have you guys seen these Sora videos from OpenAI? Have you guys seen these videos? Please tell me you guys know what Sora is and what all of this is because it's insane. If, if you don't know what it is, I'm about to explain it to you. I'm about to explain why it's about to shake the entire industry and why I think a lot of people are probably about to lose their jobs. It is that big of a deal. I've been telling you guys for a long time that soon there's going to be AI is going to be advanced enough that you'll be able to just put in a text prompt and you'll get an entire movie out of it. Well, now we're getting very close to that. You still can't get an entire movie, but you can get 60 seconds. So an entire minute. That an entire minute is an eternity for like shorts, essentially. You could have a whole storyline in a minute. So that that's actually pretty significant. Okay, Ufta has not heard about this. Many has not heard about this. What? How have you guys not heard about this? Okay, well, let me tell you about it. So, OpenAI has introduced a new text-to-video model that can create videos up to 60 seconds with a lot of detail, multiple characters, and emotions. So look at this. You guys remember those horrible AI videos I showed you before, like with Heidi and basically all the other stuff that made you guys really cringe? I think I might have showed you Will Smith eating spaghetti last year. Uh, but this is what AI video can do now. Look at this. Look at this consistent video with multiple things happening. Multiple people walking around, stores, trees, everything's consistent. And this was made with a text prompt. A text prompt, y'all. Okay, so that, there's more. Look at this. 
You have woolly mammoths. You can literally bring woolly mammoths back to life with text to video with just a single text prompt. What the heck? This is a movie trailer. A movie trailer with just a text prompt. And look at how real this looks. This guy looks super, super real. I mean, every AI video I've shown you guys, it just looks super, super weird. You know, there's always some weird irregularities, some dreaminess that looks fake. This looks very real. These videos, you can hardly tell that they're fake at all. I mean, I mean, the scale is not great. That's true. Some of these, the scale is off. But the thing is, these are pretty realistic. This is an animated one. This is one where I think animators are definitely in trouble because this one... It's not just doing the animation, but it's even doing like facial expressions on the little creature. If you guys notice, you can see the candle is burning, like the wax is burning. There's a lot going on in this one scene. So instead of having to model and render this animated scene, all you have to do is put in a, a text prompt, and then you get this. So once they release this to the public, you can release an entire 60 second animated short with just a text prompt. I mean, if we can do that now, a year from now, you could probably do a five minute video. I mean, that's how quickly this stuff is progressing. Um, what do you guys think about these AI videos though? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of potential like negative outcomes from this. I mean, as someone just mentioned, you could possibly fake a video in court to make someone look like they committed a crime they never did. There's also issues with deep fakes. Um, and, you know, anything with a sexual nature. Look at what just happened with Taylor Swift. Imagine that, but in video form. Um, there's a lot of potential horrible things that could come out of this, but I'm mainly focusing on Hollywood and the impact on jobs, because I think this could potentially take a lot of jobs, at least stock footage. I think anyone who works in stock footage or stock video should be sweating right now. Um, or B-roll. Like, I feel like a lot of this stuff could be used for B-roll. Like, look how real this looks. This is a person just walking and it looks like a, maybe Tokyo? I don't know. But if you go towards the end, you could even see her face. You could see, like, the real texture on her face. You could see her makeup. It's, AI video has never been this clear or this good before. So this is why this is a huge deal, because it's a big leap forward in the technology. Speedy says, what happened with Taylor? Well, there were some deep fake images of Taylor that went viral a few weeks ago of her and some like sexually suggestive positions. Um, it was it was a pretty big deal. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. Um, but imagine, imagine those kind of videos, I mean, those kind of photos, but in video form. That's what there is potential to happen here. And that's kind of scary. Drawing artist says, I hope it never becomes a thing. Well, it kind of already is a thing. It's just they haven't released it to the public yet. And I'm really nervous about what's going to happen when they do release it to the public. Like, what are people going to make with this? Uh, what if it's been AI all along? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, did I click on anything? Oh, okay. No. Where did the rest go? Um, anyway, there's a lot of videos. You guys should go and check the videos. They're very, very realistic. There's so much detail in them, and they're all consistently, like, there's nothing moving around, nothing morphing like we've seen in a lot of AI videos before. So, I don't know. I feel like this is a very big deal for the industry. What do you guys think about all this AI stuff? Actors will lose their jobs. I mean, it's possible. I don't think, like, the A-list actors are in trouble just yet. But I definitely think background actors could be in trouble. Like, say you just need B-roll of a school and people walking around the school. Instead of actually filming that B-roll of the school with people walking around, you could just generate that. So that's what I... I feel like background actors and... Yeah, mainly background actors are the ones that are... the that should be worried about this Sora update. I don't think like actors that still need to act and you know, A-listers are in trouble yet, but background actors definitely should be worrying about this. The Matrix is coming. I mean, if you mix this with the Apple Vision Pro thingy, I feel like we are trying to invent the Matrix. Um, some people just think it's very creepy, yeah. 
Jimin Craft Style says, Independent film students and artists may be able to create some amazing visuals with little money. Well, that's the positive. They're hoping that this leads to, like, a new renaissance of innovate, like individual creators being able to make their own movies, their own shows and whatnot. And I definitely think that will happen. There will be, like, new independent production companies that try to make AI films and AI videos and whatnot. I don't know if those movies will be good, but I definitely think that will happen. So in a way, that could be a positive. This could lead to, like, more creativity in the hands of individuals, whereas Hollywood was kind of the gatekeepers before. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It all depends if those AI movies are any good or not. Okay, Frame just thinks this is Skynet. Skynet. Um, AI is Pandora's box. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. We are engineering our own destruction. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, most of these comments are very, very negative. I think that's kind of the general sentiment. Most people were like, what the heck is this? Oh, we will talk about the Avatar trailer. Okay. Moving on to the next thing, because we do have a lot to talk about. I just had to bring up the AI stuff because it's huge. Actually, before we get to entertainment news, oh man, we do unfortunately have to talk about strike news because I feel like there's going to be a strike this year. I just feel it in my bones, and also I have some proof that we're about to talk about. So, Avatar visual effects artists have voted to unionize with IATSE by an overwhelming 75%. This is just another visual effects house, another visual effects team that wants to be part of IATSE. Why is that significant? Well, because IATSE is going to be renegotiating their contract this year, and that means if they don't like what the, the studios are saying, they could strike again. And that would mean another strike two years in a row. And here's why I think this strike is actually likely. Because this tweet, this tweet is from the IATSE official Twitter account. And you guys remember <laughs> when Elmo asked how everyone was doing and everyone decided to trauma dump on Elmo on Twitter? If you guys aren't on Twitter, you may not have known that, but it was a whole thing a few weeks ago. Well, IATSE was one of the, the, the people or companies or whatever contributing to that. And this is what they said. They said, Our agreements with the major Hollywood film and television studios and streamers expire six months from today. Also, Sesame Street is union made. I feel like this is a threat. I mean, if I'm reading between the lines, this is a threat, right? This is 100% a threat. Elmo asked, how is everyone doing? And all Ayatsi said was, well... We're glad that our agreements with the major film studios ends in six months. Is that not a threat? Am I reading too much into this? What do you guys think? Because I definitely read this as a threat. Honestly, I think I understand that obviously when you're striking, it's hard for everyone because no one can work. But I think it would be very unfair for IATSE members if everyone told them that they, did, that they just had to grin and bear it when Everyone in IATSE grin and bear it for the actors and the writers last year. So now I think it's only fair for the writers and the actors this year to support IATSE since IATSE supported them last year. So if they do strike, I support them because I understand and honestly visual effects workers are treated terribly in this industry. But this tweet solidified it for me. I think they're definitely going to end up striking because why would they say that? This is definitely... Definitely a threat. Am I reading this? Am I reading too much into this? Am I? Please tell me. Elmo is an icon. That's very true. Um, yep, threat vibes. Okay, okay. Editing Geek says you do not see another strike happening. Interesting. It might not. It might not. I know a lot of people are really, like, cash poor because they, they used all of their savings last year because of the strikes, but... I still don't know if that's a big enough reason. I feel like a lot of people who are already struggling probably have second, third jobs. So I can still see it happening. Um, Alexander agrees with me. There's going to be another strike. Yeah. Okay, Francisco agrees with me. Skywise agree with me. Okay, so some of you agree with me. Yeah. Astronomy says, I know, poor Elmo. Poor Elmo really got piled onto. Uh... What was I going to say? Astronomy says they should strike. We need higher pay and better conditions and deadlines for visual effects workers. I agree. I actually agree. Um, but anyway, 
Now moving on to the actual entertainment news. Sorry to just, just go into something that's a bit of a downer, but I had to tell you, I had to tell you, I really think that this is a threat. I'm just saying. Uh, moving on. So now let's talk about the Deadpool trailer. Because I know you guys have been waiting for this. So, <coughs> the Deadpool trailer. I watched it many times, like I'm sure you guys did as well. I have to say, overall, my honest impression, I thought it was a good trailer. I thought it was an okay trailer. I thought it didn't blow me away. It didn't, like, knock my socks off. But I thought it did its job. It kind of set up, in general, what this movie is about. It focused mainly on Deadpool, so we know this is definitely still a Deadpool movie, despite lots of rumored cameos. Um, I like seeing some of the old Deadpool characters in the beginning. I, I like some of the jokes, like the whole joke about pegging being new for Disney, I thought was pretty funny. Um, I thought it was an okay trailer. Now, here's some of my concerns. I do think that this trailer did not have the impact online that they were probably expecting. And let me explain, because I know, I know, some of you are probably like, but Deadpool had the most viewed trailer of all time within 24 hours. And it did technically, sort of, in a way, I'm about to explain how that's kind of cheating, but yes, they did earn over 365 million views, that's true. But they were counting, those cheaters, we're counting literal uh, Super Bowl views. They were counting Super Bowl views. And we all know because of Tay Tay, uh, this Super Bowl was the most Super Bowl, the most viewed Super Bowl of all time. So to count Super Bowl trailers, or Super Bowl views in your trailer views, I feel like it's a bit cheating. I'm not gonna lie, I do feel like that's cheating a little bit, and like they're trying to make their numbers seem a little bit more impressive than they actually are. Which is a little concerning. And it didn't trend. Deadpool did not trend when the trailer dropped. Which was surprising. Now, that could be Elon maybe playing on Disney or something. Maybe he's trying to, like, I don't know. We all know Elon hates Disney. Maybe he was suppressing Deadpool from trending. I don't know. But it didn't trend that night either. And I just, compared to other big trailer releases, like I have not been seeing lots of clips from the trailer. I have not been seeing people talk about the trailer since then. Like I feel like the impact from it was not high enough to warrant the most viewed trailer of all time. Do you guys agree with me, yes or no? Um, Nicholas says, Brittany makes me realize how out of the loop I am with internet trends. Well, that's why you watch me. Ofa says, yeah, that would definitely skew the results, yeah. I mean, as I said, as I said, I feel like, honestly, a lot of the hype around Deadpool is coming from the geekiest spaces on the internet. Places like here, really, where people pay attention to entertainment news, they pay attention to superhero news. Like, this circle is excited for Deadpool and getting really excited for Deadpool. I'm just not convinced yet that the average person outside of the circle is as excited for Deadpool as we are. So that's kind of where I'm at. Do you guys agree with me? Do you, I feel like I'm alone in this. I just have this really bad gut feeling. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? We can. You can disagree with me. If you think Deadpool is going to make a billion dollars and I'm dead wrong, please tell me. I want to have a debate about this. Thanos says, I love Deadpool, but the MCU is dead. I mean, that's why I think Deadpool might still do okay, because it's kind of separate from the MCU in a bit. But, like, I still feel like it's connected enough that I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know how this movie's going to do. I, I really don't. Uh, okay, Metronova wants a poll. Maybe I should do a poll. Let's do it. Let's do the poll. Okay. Starting a poll. So... Um, how, will Deadpool make a billion? That's, that's the question. Will Deadpool make a billion? So I've got yes, totally. I've got no, but close. And then I've got no, not even close. Those are your three options. Please be honest. Um, okay. 
Arakati says, I think it will do about 800 million. That's a respectable number. Rhea Rose says they are screwed if it doesn't do well. Oh, that's very true. Marvel needs this movie to perform well, like super, super well. Shelly Lee says Ryan Reynolds is great at marketing, though. That's true. My faith is all in Ryan Reynolds, honestly. I think Ryan will get this movie to do well more than Marvel will. Um, Elon Musk cannot buy Disney. He, he actually does not have the money to do it. Um, hi, Left On For Ya. Nicholas says, if it makes 800 to 900, will that be considered a success? I think it will be considered a successful disappointment in a way that will technically make money, but it will make less money than people expected. Um, Alexander Padilla says, the highest I think Deadpool will make is 750 to 809 million. That's about what I think. That's my range. Um, so it seems like most of you guys are agreeing with me. Hello Pumpkin says 700 million is the cap. Oh, you think 700 million is the cap? If this movie makes less than 700 million, then yes, that will definitely be seen as a disappointment for sure. All right, going to the poll. So 62% of you think no, it will not make a billion, but it will get close. 26% um, say no, and it won't even get close. And 12% say yes, it will definitely make a billion. So most of you think it won't. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. I'm so, so curious to see how this movie does. Um, I don't know. I just have like a, a gut feeling about this. I've been having a gut feeling about this. I really feel like this movie is it's getting the core geeks excited. It really is. But I don't know if it's getting the, the normies. That's my question. Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds. He's excellent. That's so true. Deadpool. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is the perfect Deadpool. No one else could play that role. No one else. Ending the poll. Thank you for, 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 for participating. Alexander, you want it to flop. No, I don't want it to flop. Genuinely, I don't want it to flop. Because if this movie flops, the MCU is done. Like, what can they do after that? How do they re rehabilitate themselves after this kind of movie flops? This movie cannot flop. I don't want it to flop. I'm just saying that I think it could be a successful disappointment. That's what I'm predicting. A successful disappointment. Um... Shelly Lee says, you're a normie. I don't, okay, when I say normies, I don't mean normies <laughs> disparagingly. <laughs> when I say normie, I mean like people who do not follow entertainment, pop culture, superhero news. That's what I mean by normie. I didn't mean to be like savage. <laughs> I didn't mean to be savage. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I will not flop. Stop saying it will flop, guys. I definitely don't think it'll flop. It'll be a successful disappointment. That's what I'm calling it. Um, oh, thank you, Martin Schmidt, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Minions will make more money than Deadpool. Plus, what is the cost of this movie so far? So we want, so we know how much Deadpool should make. Welcome back. Oh, thank you, Martin. We don't know the budget for Deadpool. I don't think they've released that yet, but I would be shocked if it was less than 200 million, since that's kind of par for the course these days. It's probably well north of that because they had to stop filming because of the strikes and restart filming. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's more like 250, but we don't really know yet. I think in order for this movie to like not be an embarrassment, it's it has to at least make more than the first two Deadpool movies, and I think at least like 800 million. That's where I would say it needs to make to it like completely avoid embarrassment, and I'm not totally certain it's going to reach that number yet. Yet. I need to see more. Left on for you. Thank you so much for the super chat. I don't think any 2024 will make a billion dollars. Prediction for biggest box office for 2024. You know, what? it's very possible there won't be a single billion dollar movie this year. You're totally right. It's totally possible. Um, I don't know. I think Minions could do really well. Minions movies always do really well. I still think Wicked has a huge chance. I know I'm a Wicked fangirl. Uh, but here's why I think Wicked actually still has a chance at even beating Deadpool. Because if you look at... Okay, this has 14 million views on Ryan Reynolds' official page, right? I know trailer views aren't everything and they're not like a harsh, strict variable or whatever. But 14 million views on Ryan Reynolds' page. And then look ahead to the Wicked trailer and it has 16 million views. I'm just saying, the Wicked trailer trended. The Wicked trailer trended. 
And it has more views just from the official source than the Deadpool trailer does on Twitter. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if Wicked made more than Deadpool, there is some precedence for it. Oh, I've definitely got to stop this or Universal will totally tag this video. <laughs> Universal does not play with copyright. Um, Arvin's excited for Wicked, that's great. Um, Hello Pumpkin says, oop, I don't know if it'll make 800 million this time. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about. I don't know if it will either. I think, I don't know if Wicked's gonna make 800 million either. I think that's quite steep for this movie, but I can see it making like in the 700s. I can really do it. Like in the 700s, I can see it. Um, never seen the Wicked musical. Oh, I've seen it tons. I love Wicked. I love Wicked so much. Wicked is actually the musical that got me to fall in love with musicals. So that's, Wicked has a special place in my heart because of that reason. Now, I think Wicked actually looks pretty good. Now, I don't love everything about this trailer, I'm just gonna say. I think some of it looks really good. Like, when they have real sets and real props, I think it looks amazing. I think the costumes look excellent. I think the costumes look fantastic. But when I don't like it, is when it gets too CGI. Like, when it just starts to start looking like they're just sitting on a some sort of green screen or something, that's when it starts to look a little too artificial. I don't really care for it. Um, but yeah, honestly, for the most part, I, I really like it. Sorry about that. I think the costumes look great. I'm still here for the actors, even with Ariana's drama aside. I'm just... I don't, sorry, I don't really care for the CGI nature of some of these shots, and I don't like the final note from Defying Gravity. They end the trailer with the, the, the iconic note from Defying Gravity, and it just sounds very different from Idina's version, and I'm just not sure if I like how Cynthia does that note. Um, but other than that, I think it does look promising. What do you guys think of the Wicked trailer? C.D. Wood says, looks rather dull, not very vibrant, and eye-catching, looks muddy. Oh, no. So that's a terrible review of the trailer. <laughs> I think it looks all right. I think it looks okay. We're going to talk about Moana 2 in a minute. Alex, thank you so much for the super chat. The CGI looks iffy, but it's still in post. Hopefully, it'll look better in November. That's true. That's true. This, this movie isn't done. Maybe the CGI will look better. I just... I'm not going to lie, some of the CGI kind of reminded me of, and yes, I'm going to say it, Quantumania. It just kind of looked that, that same sort of glossy, fake-looking feel. It kind of had that. Uh, oh no, stop! Again, Universal will definitely take this down if I play this too much. Um, but I, again, I like Ariana Grande. I think she's a fantastic singer. She can definitely pull off the Kristen Chenoweth voice, for sure. Um, and the costumes look great. I really want her glasses. The glasses are amazing. I think her hair and glasses look fantastic. Um, but yeah, when you get to shots like this, it starts to look a little bit fake and a little bit weird. I wish they had based it more in like a grounded real set like they do with the Dune movies. That would have been so cool. Because I understand obviously Oz isn't a real place, but like if they had done something where they blended the real with the physical, I mean the real with the digital like they did with Dune, I think that probably would have been better and maybe made this movie look a little bit less fake looking. Um, Alex says, Cynthia's riff didn't bother me. Other actresses have riffed at the end of De Defying Gravity before. Oh, I know. I have listened to actually more than just Idina's version of the soundtrack. That's how much I love Wicked. Um, Eden Espinoza is actually my favorite Elphaba more than Idina Menzel. And even Eden Espinoza does the iconic note in the same kind of way that Idina Mandel does it. So it's just, it's not that she changes it. It's just more like it sounds like she's in pain. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it does. It sounds like she's forcing that note out, like it's not coming out natural, like she's really having to scream it. That's why I didn't care for that final riff. Can you tell I'm a theater geek? Um, okay, Francisco doesn't care for Wicked, that's fine. Uh, we talked about the Joker 2 thing, Mickey. Evil Connor says, yeah, this looks a little dull like Peter Pan and Wendy. Not Peter Pan and Wendy! No, not Peter Pan and Wendy. 
I mean, yeah, some of these shots look a little dark. Not gonna lie, like this one. I wish they would just up the, the brightness just a little bit. Just a smooch, just a smooch. And then I think I'd be happy with it. That's it. So anyway, I think the costumes look amazing. Like, look at these costumes. They look very, very accurate. I love the dress, looks great. I also love the poster and how they're holding hands and it forms a W. Very iconic. I think the poster looks incredible. Um, I'm still very excited for this movie. Despite the fact that I do have some complaints about the trailer, I, I'm still very excited for it. So what are you guys thinking about Wicked? Are you still going to see this movie? Are you excited for it? Don't care. What do you think about Wicked? Um, Esther Heim says, West Side Story was a good movie that flopped partially due to the controversy with the main actor. It would be hi hypocritical of audiences to support Wicked with Ariana Grande. <laughs> well... Okay, the West Side Story controversy was the fact that there was a guy that apparently groomed and sexually is well, I don't want to say it because YouTube will flag me, but I feel like the accusations around, what's his name, um, the dude from West Side Story are a lot more serious than the accusations against Ariana Grande. I don't feel like those are on the same level, in my opinion. Um... Okay, so most of you will interest it. Most of you will see it. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I just hope it's not full of CGI. That's true. But it does seem like at least most of you are interested, which is good. Cinnamon Roll says Eden Espinosa is actually a lead on a new Broadway musical called Limp Limpica. Oh, I had no idea. I had no idea. I'm glad that Eden got another role. That's great. Uh, but anyway... Moving on to the next trailer. We also got a trailer for Twisters. We got a trailer for Twisters. Y'all, I actually think this trailer looks pretty good. I think it looks like a 90s action blockbuster, like the, the first one. Again, I think this is a reboot. It's not a sequel. I'm pretty sure this is, like, just the, th the same thing again, in a way, but in modern times. Um, it's got Anthony Ramos in it. It's got uh, Glenn Powell in it, who's really having a moment. I don't know, this looks like the kind of movie that is going to click with Middle America because it looks like it takes place there. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I think this Twisters movie actually also looks pretty great and could do pretty well. Anyone interested in a Twisters movie? Anyone even seen the original Twisters? I mean, look at this cast. We got Daisy Edgar Jones, Glenn Powell, Brendan Perea, David Cornsweet. Oh, you have your future Superman! Your future Superman's in this. Kiernan Shipka, uh, Sasha Lane, Daryl McCormick, and Anthony Ramos. I mean, this is a pretty nice cast. I know most of those names. Um, yeah, I think this is a pretty good cast. I think the trailer looks pretty good. I'm excited for Twisters. And I think because Middle America will support this film, I think this movie could be another surprise major hit. Not a billion dollar hit or anything like that, but I still think it can make like a pretty good amount of money. Like maybe, I don't know, 500 million? That's my prediction. Okay, so a lot of you are excited. Interesting. Twisters was iconic. You know, there was a Twisters experience in the Universal uh, Universal Studios in Orlando. I used to go do that every time I went to Universal. I'm so mad that they got rid of it because I actually loved that experience. They made you feel like you were watching a tornado happen right in front of you. I loved it. Oh, Shelly, you saw the original and didn't like it? Oh, no. I love the original Twisters. I haven't seen it in a while, like a long while, but I remember when I saw it, I loved it. You've never heard of this, says C.D. Woods. Interesting. I have no idea what the budget is for this one. Uh, so some of you have heard of it, some of you have not, but it does seem like those who have heard of it are at least interested. I think, again, Twisters could probably do surprisingly well just because I think Middle America will probably really like this movie. Uh, moving on. So Inside Out 2 is another trailer we got. So many trailers I missed. Oh my god. Now this is just, it's more of a teaser because it's not very long. It's only 30 seconds. I basically just got to see a bit of Riley. Um, she's now, well she was, she was always working in hockey. She was always a hockey athlete. But we got to see her at a show, or I mean a show, a game. Oh my god. I don't, I don't do sports. Sorry. I said a show. <laughs> it's not a show. It's a game. Um, she's at her game, and we have her emotions, like, helping her play the game. Not a show. <laughs> See, when I was a kid, I was always in shows. I didn't play games. I went to shows. I was in, like, 
theater shows. So that's why I said show. Um, anyway, I think it looks interesting. I'm excited to see it. I want to see with who the new people are going to be, the new emotions. Like, we got anxiety here. That's really the only one we've actually met so far. I want to see the others. Um, but I'm still excited for Inside Out, too. I think this is, like, the one Disney movie that I'm for sure certain is actually going to do well. So I'm, I've got my fingers crossed for this one. Are you guys excited for Inside Out, too? What do you guys think? Uh, anxiety looks good. Anxiety is voiced by Maya Hawke. Um, so that's interesting. I do think the design is very fascinating. It reminds me of anxiety for sure. Um, what sports did I play in school? I played the part of theater geek. <laughs> I told you guys when I was in high school, I went to a performing arts school where I majored in theater. We didn't even have sports teams. If you wanted to be a part of the sports team, you could be part of the, I think it was a frisbee. Like we had a competitive frisbee thing at the local YMCA across the street. We didn't even have like a basketball team. We were entirely a theater school. Well, not theater school, an art school. So that's why I said show. <laughs> I'm not used to saying game. Um, Dorian says I was an orchestra. Oh, I did orchestra in middle school too. Um, I know the other emotions we, I did announce what the other emotions were on another stream. I don't remember what they were at the top of my head, uh, but I'm curious to see the other emotions too. Uh, but anyway, moving on from this. So now we're talking about Moana 2. Now Moana 2 is a bit of a mess and I gotta tell you why, because I feel like there's some behind the scenes drama on this movie. Not feel like, I know there's some behind the scenes drama on this movie. Because this movie was supposed to be, by the way, this movie was supposed to be a Disney Plus series, but it's being turned into a movie now. So this movie, by the way, is coming out for Thanksgiving this year. And they're having to now reformat a TV show and form it into a movie. And you could tell this was a last minute decision, a last minute effort, because they did not even have the voice cast available yet. Dwayne Johnson and Olali Cravalho are now, they're in talks to reprise their roles. In talks, which, mean, which means that Disney did not even get them approved. They not even confirmed them as voice actors before they decided to turn this into a movie. Now here's what I think happened. You guys know how for Disney Plus, sometimes they don't want to go with the original actors because they that's too expensive so they go with a, a an actor that sounds like the original actor i bet for the when this was going to be just a tv show i bet they went with actors that sounded like the rock and um uh, olali I, oh I'm, I'm sorry i don't know how to pronounce her name i'm pretty sure they got like sound alikes to play those characters and now that's why they have to cast the actual people because they're doing the movie now so this whole thing is done backwards like you get you can't tell me Oh, they just had a good idea for the movie and they decided to make a movie. No, they're doing this because they want to make more money and they can make more money in theaters than on Disney Plus. And because they're desperate for a hit and they're like, oh, Moana is doing really well on Disney Plus. Let's do Moana too. That's why they're doing it. It's all for money. And it's so backwards that the fact that they announced this before they even had their actors on board. Like, what are they doing over there? This is why Disney seems like such a mess. Because, like, why are they doing this? Are you guys even excited for Moana 2? I mean, we're still, by the way, we're still getting the Moana live action movie the next year. The next year, we're also getting the, the freaking live action Moana movie also with The Rock. So I feel like that's a lot of Moana. We're getting Moana 2 and then the live action Moana. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me, like, at all. Do you guys think this sounds great? Are you guys excited for Moana 2? I would be excited for Moana 2 if it weren't for the fact that they were literally retrofitting it from a TV show. Like that to me just screams like it's probably going to be low quality, in my opinion. Um, Yellow Umbrella says the Moana actress le legit said she didn't even get told there was going to be a Moana 2. She found out on Twitter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because The Rock... The Rock actually announced this. He made this post a day after they announced that Moana 2 was going to be a thing. So that's how I know that these actors were not told ahead of time because The Rock is super social media savvy. 
If The Rock knew that Moana 2 was going to be a thing ahead of time, he would have posted this at the same time that the news was dropped, but he didn't. He posted this a year, not a year, he posted this a day later because he probably didn't know. And I bet you, I bet you, that's what I tweeted here. I said that my hunch is always right. I bet you The Rock had no idea that Moana 2 was coming out. Because if he did, he would have tweeted it probably more than just Moana 2 and the date. Because he usually says something personal. This just screams to me, just based off of Dwayne's past history, this just screams to me, even posting late, that he just had no idea. So this whole thing is being like, hastily put together and I just I feel like the end result just can't be good so that's why I'm a little bit not looking forward to Moana 2 now and Moana 2 is going to be coming out of the same time as Wicked like what the heck are they trying to have a Barbenheimer moment where we have like a Moana Wicked situation I don't know if that's really going to work because I feel like the same audience is interested in both movies but we'll see um <laughs> Moana 2 the search for more money um, Metronoma says, what makes, uh, what makes Seed over at Disney these days? It's sad. I mean, it really is sad. I mean, can you tell me that there's passion behind this project? If they're just, like, hastily turning this TV show into a movie without even having the actors ready on board yet? And Lynn manuel and Lynn manuel Miranda isn't even going to be doing the music for it. Probably because they weren't going to have them do the music for the TV show. So why would they have them be ready for the movie? Now, they are saying that he is going to be uh, doing the music for the live action movie. So it's like, why are we not getting him on Moana 2? Why is he going to be doing the music for the live action movie, but not Moana 2? How does this make any sense? All of this seems backwards and doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Martin Schmidt says, Bob Iger saw apparently Moana 2 and said it's too good for Disney+. Plus." I know that's what Bob Iger is saying. But I don't think that's what's true. I think Bob Iger thought, oh crap, we don't have a lot of big hits this year and I'm being attacked from my, well, potentially from my board and I need a big hit. Let's make Moana a, a movie because that'll surely be a big hit. I think that's what he was thinking. Mo Wicked. <laughs> Wicada? I don't, I don't know if those two can be really combined. Um, Wicana? I don't know if Wicana is going to work. <laughs> um... Amorek says, Wicked will solo Moana so bad like it's crazy. Yeah, I actually think Wicked could do more than Moana. Is that crazy? Because I know Moana is super, super popular on Disney+, Plus, but I still feel like Wicked could actually do better than Moana. Like, I don't know if it's just because I'm really excited for Wicked, but I really feel like there's a lot of hype for it and interest in it. So, we'll see, we'll see. It will be embarrassing, though. If Wicked beats Moana, it'll be so embarrassing for Disney if that happens. So I kind of want it to happen. <laughs> but I don't know. I just genuinely think Wicked has a lot of potential to do really well. That's, so that's what I'm thinking. What do you guys think, though? <laughs> Sorry, I need a drink. Um, Alex says, the only Disney princess sequel I like was Cinderella 3. Well, that's a throwback. Anna Bear says, replace all Disney execs with AI. You know what? Maybe we should start a place replacing these execs with AI. I don't know. Maybe they can give us some better content. Who knows? Um, oh, Jay says, I'm watching Wicked, but not Moana, to be honest. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm definitely seeing both, for sure. But I can just totally see Wicked actually doing better than Moana, at least on opening weekend. So that would be very interesting if that were to happen. Uh, but anyway, moving on to the next topic. So here are all the sequels that Disney has coming out. This is quite a lot. We have Deadpool 3, Inside Out 2, Moana 2, Mufasa. You guys know how I feel about Mufasa. Snow White, Captain America 4, Fantastic 4, Moana, Shang-Chi 2, Avengers 5, Zootopia 2, Toy Story 5, Frozen 3, Frozen 4, Maleficent 3, Jungle, uh, Jungle Cruise 2, Cruella 2, Hocus Pocus 3, Avengers 6, Eternals 2, Tron 3, Mandalorian. Oh my god, there is so many movies. There is so many sequels coming out, like Sequel City over here. I mean, I get why they're doing this. A lot of their originals aren't doing well, so that's why they feel like they have to do sequels. But man, man, is this a lot of sequels. Are you guys looking forward to all of these sequels? Or do you guys think that some of these won't do well? I actually think at least half of these will do really well. Um, some of these... I'm not so sure about, like, Tron. 
I don't think the Tron movie's gonna do well, because none of the Tron movies have ever done well. Um, but I think, like, I don't know. Inside Out 2 will probably do really well. I think the Frozen movies will do really well. I think Zootopia will do really well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some of these I'm not so sure about. Yes, I am going to be reviewing, reviewing um, Avatar The Last Airbender on Friday. So make sure you guys watch the first few episodes tomorrow because I'm going to be reviewing uh, the show on Friday. I know Toy Story 5. I still can't believe we're getting Toy Story 5. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. I agree, Violet. Another Hocus Pocus? Well, the second one did really well, so I guess that's why they're doing a third. Alexander Padilla, not a single one. Not a single one. Uh, you're intrigued with Snow White? Oh, I'm so curious to see what happens with Snow White. That's going to be cancel culture on steroids when that movie comes out. Oh, man, that's going to be just... That's going to be something for sure when that movie comes out. Um, well, speaking of Lilo and Stitch, I'm glad someone mentioned it because they are making a Lilo and Stitch live-action remake. And it looks like they're actually using a puppet. They're actually using a puppet. Look at this. It's not, they're not just using some CGI monstrosity. They're actually using a puppet. So that makes me really happy. This is like the one live-action reboot that might be good. I don't know. This is, I don't know. I'm actually looking forward to it. The, the fact that they're using a real puppet immediately made me so much more excited for this movie, like, a lot more excited. What do you guys think, though? Are you excited for the live-action Lilo and Stitch? Are there any of these other sequels that you're interested in here? Uh, be honest, I mean, we do have two major sequels coming out in 2026. Both Frozen 3 and Toy Story 5 will release in 2026, so they're trying to make sure that the 2026 is at least a better year than 2024 and 2025, probably. What do you guys think, though? Uh, I think it looks really cute. Like, I actually think Stitch looks really great here, which is why I'm excited for it. You don't know about Lilo and Stitch on a bear? Aw. Moth Girl says that's encouraging. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they're using a real puppet. I know, like, the bar is low, but I totally expected them to go with something CGI. So the fact that it's a real puppet makes me so much more excited for this movie. Hello, Pumpkins is throwing tomatoes, though. Why are you throwing tomatoes? Okay, so not everyone is excited. Interesting. Um, are these really needed, though? Are you talking about the sequels? I mean, some of these definitely aren't. I think they're only making a Tron 3 because they're building a Tron ride in Magic Kingdom. Not because that movie's actually going to make any money. Especially since Jared Leto's in it. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm excited for some of these. Definitely not all of them. Not Mufasa. But, like, some of these I think will do okay. Bar is hitting dirt. That is very true. <laughs> um, oh, no. Frozen 2 killed your love for Frozen. Yeah, I did not care for the first Frozen movie. I got a... I mean, the second Frozen movie. I love the fro first Frozen movie. The second Frozen movie, yeah, I did not care for nearly as much. Totally agree with you. Uh, but moving on, because we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Disney is also releasing two Star Wars films in 2026. Why are they releasing two freaking Star Wars films in 2026? They went from not releasing any Star Wars films for like several years to two in one year. How does that make sense? That's crazy. That's so freaking crazy to me. Like what? And it's a Mandalorian movie and a Rey movie? Both of these are going to flop. I mean, I'm just saying they might... No, I'm not even going to say they might do okay. The Ray movie is definitely not going to do okay. The Mandalorian movie might do all right, but I'm still not certain because didn't the audience significantly decline in the last season because the last season wasn't that good? Like, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that, like, by the end of the final episode of the last season of The Mandalorian, the audience had dropped off significantly, right? So... I don't understand who's going to show up for the movie if the audience is already like half of what it was from season one. You know what I mean? And this doesn't come out for several years. I just don't see either of these movies doing very well. And I can't believe they're putting them out in the same year. That's crazy to me. I think this is insane. Uh, okay. So one person likes Star Wars. Okay, Laura Beat says Mando has a small chance. I definitely agree out of these two, Mando has the chance to be, 
you know, actually a success, but I just can't see the Ray movie being a success. I can't see it's too much baggage, too much history with the sequel trilogy. The fan base will hate it before they even see it. I just don't see the Ray movie being a hit. I just can't see it. If it ever even gets made, I mean, are these movies even gonna get made? How many Star Wars movies have we heard are gonna get like into production and then they don't even get made? Um, I know Pedro gets another movie. They're probably going to make him take his helmet off at least at some point. Because, I mean, how are you going to have an entire movie and you don't see the main character's face? I feel like they definitely got to take that helmet off at some point. Um, oh, Dorian, you like Ray? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just talking about how, like, the majority of fans don't really seem to care for Ray. Hi, Pop. Alden was never interested in Star Wars. Yeah, I think the Star Wars hype is... If it's not dead, it's definitely pretty low. Um, Nicholas says, I was a Rey defender until the rise of Sky Skywalker in the sequels as a whole. Yeah, the rise of Skywalker was so bad. That genuinely was an awful movie. Like, I would say that movie is on the same level of, like, Jurassic World Dominion almost. Like, it's that bad of a movie. Um, Primal Plasma says, maybe Finn will finally get with Rey? Wait, you ship Finn with Ray? I don't know about that. I was a Raylo shipper, I'll be honest. I liked Raylo until the very end, when somehow they made me not ship Raylo by the last movie, and then when they did kiss, I was just like, I don't even want it anymore. <laughs> because they ruined it. But yeah, by the second movie, I was all in on Raylo, and then they ruined it. Um, but anyway, moving on. So we finally did get the Fantastic Four casting. We do know that Pedro Pascal is Mr. Fantastic. Vanessa Kirby is Sue Storm. Joseph Quinn from Stranger Things is Johnny Storm. And Ebon Moss Barak from The Bear is The Thing. So I think this cast is okay. They gave us this graphic here, which I think is pretty cute. Um, I like that they got his face here somehow in the picture. Um, it does look like it's going to be a period piece. Maybe it takes place in the 60s or 50s, something like that. Because... Uh, I would be very interested to see what they plan to do with the Fantastic Four and how they're going to do it differently than the previous iterations because we all know those previous iterations did not work out. So Marvel has a lot to prove to make sure that they can prove that they know how to do Fantastic Four where no one else knew how to do it. So there's a lot of pressure on this. I think this cast is okay. I'm not like over the moon about it, but I don't think it's bad either. I do think that Pedro Pascal is a bit overexposed in like in everything, but I like him enough that I'm not hating that he's in this. Um, overall, I think it's an okay cast. Just okay. What do you guys think about the Fantastic Four cast? Okay, Red Banana Green thinks the cast looks boring. Yeah, it's a little bit safe, in my opinion. I agree. Um, it's coming out in... Uh, Next year, right? 2025? I believe it's coming out next year. I actually think this might be good. It's being directed by the same guy who did WandaVision, and I loved WandaVision. So the fact that he's a part of this makes me feel like this movie might actually be good. Jim and Craft Style, thank you so much for the super chat. Hear me out. Star Wars can be saved if they put out a Lego Star Wars movie in the style of Lego Batman. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if it'll save Star Wars, but I do think, I actually think that movie that you just described will do better than either of the Star Wars live action movies that they're actually making. So maybe they should do that. You know what? They should totally do that, especially if they want kids to actually care about Star Wars, because right now Star Wars is like, it's seen as an older brand that only like older audiences care about. Kids don't really care about Star Wars at all. So if they want kids to care about Star Wars, I think a Lego Star Wars movie actually sounds pretty interesting. That's a good idea. Thank you. Oh, no, Alexander, you didn't like WandaVision? Oh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, okay, Leah says it looks fine. Um, Cinnamon Roll says a Lego Star Wars movie would be cute and funny. I think so, too. I think so, too. Okay, Joseph is no Chris Evans. That's true. I will say that I don't think Joseph Quinn is as hot as Chris Evans. <laughs> That's true. If we're going for hotness, huh? See what I did there? Chris Evans is definitely hotter. Um, 
the poster. I like the poster though. I like the vibe that the poster is giving off. I like the 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 retroness of it. So if this is the vibe of the movie, I'm here for it because I really like this poster a lot. Um, moving on. <laughs> yeah, I know the sh the chat is getting very shady. So, this is new news that just dropped, but Avengers 5 will no longer be titled The Kang Dynasty. Marvel was making movies uh, was making moves away from Kang reportedly even before Jonathan Majors was fired. So, I think this makes a lot of sense. I think that Avengers 5 is I don't even know who the Avengers are going to be, to be honest. I don't think anyone really knows. I think this this I think the entire MCU is a mess. To be honest, I think the fact that now they don't even have a like a lead villain makes it even messier. Maybe Deadpool will fix that. I don't know. Um, but I think it makes a lot of sense to drop Kang. It's just there's no actor that they could cast in Jonathan Major's place that would even want the role just because there's too much baggage there. They'll constantly be compared to Jonathan Major's every time Kang's on screen and it'll just be a reminder of what happened. So I just, th I think it makes a lot of sense that they're moving away from Kang. I never thought he was really working in the industry or working in the, the, I don't think Kang was really working in this universe in the first place, as you guys know. I really liked him the first time we saw him, but then after that, I just thought he progressively got worse and worse. And I thought he was really bad in Loki season two. So honestly, I just don't think Kang was working out. So I think this makes a lot of sense. What do you guys think though? Um... Okay, some people really want Doom. I mean, if they're bringing out Fantastic Four next year, maybe they can bring Doom. I don't know. Iron Man already is dead. Yes, Iron Man died in Endgame. Nicholas says, Jonathan Majors has successfully separated himself from the MCU. Shout out to the homie with the computer. <laughs> the laptop. Oh my god, the laptop is still funny. That video will forever be funny to me. Because, like, why was that dude having a laptop filming that fight? Like, what was going on there? Um, Gabby says, Disney keeps complicating franchises, keep uh, films fun and simple. Oh, I totally agree. That's why I feel like the MCU is a mess. It's way too convoluted and, and it makes no sense. It used to be when you watched the, the MCU movies, you felt like... There was an overarching story that you were watching, like you were watching a season of a TV show and that each episode was, a, like each movie was an episode. Now it doesn't feel like that anymore. Now it feels like there are multiple TV shows running at the same time and each TV show has their own arc and their own story that they're trying to tell. And that's very, very confusing when you're just like one person trying to watch and make sense of one overall story. Because it doesn't feel like there is one overall story. It feels like there are multiple stories. And that's why I feel like it's getting really complicated. Um, okay, a lot of people are saying they want Galactus or Doom. Okay. Um, or Magneto. I would love Magneto. I love Magneto so much. But I don't think they're going to use Magneto as the main villain. Not at least until the X-Men are more around. Nate Lawrence says, Endgame should have been the last Avengers movie. Honestly, I agree. I agree. Now, this is why I think they're doing it. I mean, honestly, there's no way they can rehabilitate Jonathan Major's personality and career, especially since there was another article with more women coming out saying that they abused or they were abused by him. So I think Jonathan Major's career is 100% done. So this is probably only helping them move away, move away from Kang. Because Kang, yeah, you just can't recast someone who... The previous actor has this much baggage. It just, it, it'll never work. It just can't work. So I understand why they're dropping Kang. Any other thoughts on Kang or on Jonathan Majors before we move on? Um, Cinnamon Roll says, maybe the connecting storylines made it too complex. I think they're trying to have different pockets of the MCU. Like they have the street level pocket. They have the cosmic level pocket. They have... Like, all these different pockets. Like, they have the magic pocket. And I'm just feeling like, that's what I mean when I say, like, the MCU, the MCU used to feel like one overarching story where each movie was a single episode. Now it feels like there's multiple seasons going on at the same time, and each season is focusing on something different. And that's why it feels, con like, confusing. So that's how I would describe the MCU currently. Yes, it's very recent. Yeah, I agree, Nicholas. Kang was never something that 
I never thought that Kang was working out to begin with, so I'm totally cool with them moving away from Kang. I think that's what they need to do, to be honest. Moving on. So, it also seems like Blade and Thunderbolts are up in the air because in a recent uh, phone call at a... No, it wasn't a phone call. Yes, it was a phone call. It was the investor call. Bob Iger talked about future Marvel releases, and he only mentioned Fantastic Four and Captain America Brave New World. He did not mention Blade or Thunderbolts, which makes me think that those are possibly up in the air and might not happen now. And even apparently Florence Pugh thinks that Thunderbolts might not happen now. So that's interesting. This like is what she said. Stops, false starts with Thunderbolts. But you guys are going forward. So what can we expect and how excited are you to get back to work? It kind of feels like it still might not happen because of the amount of times that it's been paused, yeah. which is just a natural feeling. But I'm going straight after this. So when we're done with press, I'm going to go to Atlanta and start doing some prep and then I'll do a bit more press with you guys and then I'm off. I'm shooting. So I'll be. So she said she's shooting, but she's still not quite sure it's happening. So I feel like the actors, even in the MCU, still don't really know what's going on right now. Like, it seems like a lot of things might be up in the air behind the scenes. Like, how is Florence Pugh like, yeah, I'm about to go start shooting, but I'm still not quite sure this movie's happening. Like, how is she doing both? Like, the only way she can feel both is if the MCU is a total mess behind the scenes and they're not communicating with any of their actors right now. Because I feel like that's probably what's happening. Do you guys feel like... Thunderbolts will actually happen? Do you get, Do you guys think Blade will actually happen? Honestly, I'm starting to second-guess those things. I'm really not sure anymore. What do you guys think? Um, Alex says, darn, that was the only MCU movie I was looking forward to. Thunderbolts. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Nicholas says, this gives me the same vibes as Kit Harrington saying, disappointed about... <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Um... Michael says, I honestly just want Kingpin and Daredevil in the next Spider-Man trilogy. I feel like they really need to start just focusing on their A-team characters, like their A-list characters. Why are they focusing on the Thunderbolts in the first place when those are full of, like, Disney Plus characters and B-C-list heroes? Like, I feel like Thunderbolts is probably not going to do super well in theaters just because it's... It relies so much on Disney Plus knowledge and so much history and homework that you have to do. I don't know. Honestly, I can see them canceling Thunderbolts, to be honest. I don't know if it will, but I can understand if they did. Oh, thank you, Oscar. Um, Astronomy says, I don't think either will happen, particularly not Blade. It's been too long. Yeah, I don't think Blade is happening. They announced Blade years ago, and they haven't even started filming yet. I don't think Blade is happening at all. Um, but I hope it happens. I really want to see it. Although it seems like Michael B. Jordan might have taken that, that vein because Michael B. Jordan is working on his own black vampire movie. So I feel like that's kind of Blade. <laughs> so maybe Michael B. Michael B. Jordan will make Blade before MCU can. Um, but anyway, moving on to the next topic. Speaking of Disney, they're getting sued by Gina Carano for wrongful termination and discrimination. Oh my god. Now, this, I feel like she's just doing this for attention because there's no way in hell she's going to win this. There's no way that Disney will ever rehire her because it'll look very bad for them. Um, obviously, she must have upset some people who worked at Lucasfilm, so she's not going to have friends over there that are going to want to work with her. So, th I feel like she's just doing this to keep her name in the press, keep her name you know, getting attention because that she really only gets attention for this. To be honest with you, I'm kind of over the whole Gina Carano situation. That happened years ago and I feel like she has been doing her very best to keep this thing relevant and has been doing that successfully. <laughs> because I feel like that, ha that happened so long ago and we're still talking about it. I'm like, girl, let it go. Let it go. Like, just, just let it go. Um, what do you guys think, though? Um, uh, justice for Gina. It's not happening, guys. It's not happening. Disney is never taking her back. They are never taking her back. Yeah, I think she needs to get over it. I'm sorry, but it's it's been years. It's been years. It's She needs to move on. That's how I feel about it. It's been years. Why is she doing this now? This was years ago. Um, oh god, not the Taylor quote. Um, okay, Jovic says you couldn't care less. That's fair. 
Um, Astronomy says she should have sued for libel. They slandered her. It's not... Okay, you know what? If, if she sued for libel, I would think she would have more of a chance at winning that than discrimination and wrongful termination. Because Disney can fire her for really any reason that they want. If they felt like she wasn't putting out the best face that they want for their show, then they can fire her for that. But for trying to paint her as this awful person... Maybe they can, maybe she would have a case for that, for libel. That I can see, but not for wrongful termination, no. Um, Primal Plasma says, it's hard for her to get over it because the role was so iconic. It's hard to give up something like that. I mean, was the role iconic though? Was it? Anna Bear says she just needs to move on. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree. I feel like it happened so long ago and she's just holding out onto it. Like, I just, I think she needs to move on. That's, that's what I think about it. All right. Speaking of uh, moving on, it seems like Disney is trying to move on past movies and is trying to find a new entertainment venue that will get people excited because their movies aren't doing very well. So now they're like, let's get into gaming. They are partnering with Epic Games to have their own Fortnite map full of lots of Disney stuff. And they have the whole trailer here. Here's a map. Um, I don't really know. This looks really cool. It kind of looks like the map from Wreck-It Ralph 2. Like, it looks like they're literally just making Wreck-It Ralph, but for real. Um, but it looks like you have... You even have the Wreck-It Ralph apartment here. You've got little Disney Plus City over here. ESPN... Got like Marvel and Lucasfilm over here, the Pixar ball. I don't know. Lots of stuff here. Oh, is this the Nightmare Before Christmas? Oh, it is. You got a little Nightmare Before Christmas part of the map. I don't know. What I see them doing with this is like somehow putting all of this on Disney Plus eventually. And then instead of Disney Plus just being a streaming service for movies and TV shows, it also becomes a gaming platform and people can like go around in this Fortnite map playing Disney characters. I feel like that's what they're going to do. And in fact, I've been predicting this for months. If you guys have been watching me consistently, you guys know I've been con I've been predicting this exact thing to happen. So it's funny that it actually happened. Will you guys actually play this? I don't even play Fortnite, but I think this looks fascinating. I think I might actually play this. What do you guys think? It's basically their version of the metaverse. This is like Disney's version of the Oasis. Just put on the Apple Vision Pro and like you've got the whole metaverse situation going on. Um, Nicholas says, also, why is almost every game nowadays open world? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of miss games that had a like a, a narrative. Like I feel like right now it's just a lot of like open world team sort of kind of games. And I, I like narrative games with a good story, you know? But I think this map looks really cool. Not gonna lie, I think this map looks really cool. It looks exactly like the Wreck-It Ralph 2 <laughs> map. Um, I don't play Fortnite either, but I think this looks pretty cool. Oh, Mauricio I think this is gonna flop. Interesting. I don't know if this will flop. I hope it doesn't. I mean, they. this is expensive, so it better not flop. Um... Okay, the Free Rocket Man says it pains me to say it looks amazing. I think it looks pretty good too. I'm not gonna lie. I think this actually could be successful. So we'll see. I will update you guys on this. I think this is a fascinating story. So I will let you guys know more about it as we hear more about it. I'm trying to keep moving because I did not realize it's been an hour and a half that we've been talking. Oh my god, we have so much to catch up on. I'm so sorry. This is such a long stream. I'm so sorry, guys. But I, I hope this is okay. We're actually, we've got some, we've got a little bit of stuff to talk about. We still have to talk about um, the Avatar. And I have WTF news. So just stick with me. Probably in about another like 20 minutes and then we'll be done. So sorry, this is a long stream. Anyway, also, this, this has been such a long stream. I think that all of my, my windows have literally gone to sleep that's why i have to refresh them <laughs> that's not good but anyway coyote versus acme is no longer being released freaking david zaslav who hasn't even seen this freaking movie does not want this movie released he just wants to take the tax money and run which i think is so crappy of him 
and I cannot believe that this is even legal. How can you not release a film after it's already been made and just say that you could just take the tax write off on it? Like, how is that legal? How is that not like insurance fraud or something like that? Like, how is this legal? And the fact that he never even saw it and he won't even like sell it to anyone unless it's 75 to 80 million dollars, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. <clears throat> Like, absolutely crazy. Like, I really hope this movie gets seen somehow, some way. I don't know. But the fact that he won't even, like, sell it to other studios, it's insane. It's insane. He has no respect for art. He has no respect for movies. He has no respect for the creatives that work for him. All he cares about is money. Money, money, money. And I I don't understand how any creative would want to work with Warner Brothers knowing that at any point... Their movie could just be shelved, and there's nothing that they could do about it. I mean, this is setting a precedent with the bl the Batgirl situation. The um, there was another movie that they did it to as well, and then this one as well. I mean, this is a they're doing this for a lot of movies now, just completely shelving them. Why would you ever want to work with Warner Brothers when you know that this is always going to be a possibility? I mean, this is just so anti art to me. What do you guys think about this? I really hope that someone at least leaks this thing so we can watch it or something because this just sucks. Um, oh, thank you, Wanda. Francisco says, I agree with you. It was a long, it was so long ago. Just get over it. Oh, you're talking about the Gina thing? Yeah. Um, Ajaman says, what would you ex uh, accept, accept from a big company's business? Oh, I don't know. I guess I expect businesses to care about their employees and the work that they do, but I guess that's too much to ask for. Um, you know, you would think at least David Zaslav, with all that's going on, he would even bother to watch the movie, you know? You would think maybe at least he'd bother to watch it to see what all the hoopla is about, but no, he couldn't even be bothered to watch the movie, which means he just, he just doesn't care. He just does not care. And that's what is so sad to me, that we have... This is what I mean when I say this is what's wrong with Hollywood. This is what Dakota Johnson was kind of referring to. You have people in charge, far up executives, who just do not care about the creative process at all. And that's why we're getting these blah movies that we are. It's just so sad. So sad. Release the Batgirl cut. Yes, I agree. Amorex says, Warner Brothers been real icky recently. Hearing about the color purple stuff just made me dislike them even more. You know what? I don't even blame Warner Brothers for the color purple. I, I blame Oprah. I completely blame Oprah for that. Um, you think Netflix will buy the movie? They tried to option the movie to Netflix, but Netflix didn't want to pay the 70 to 85 million. So I don't know if Netflix will do it. Uh, but anyway, I had to just bring this up because... I think it's, I think it's insane. I think it's anti-art. I think this is why this, this industry is struggling because we have people like him in charge who just, who just do not care about art. And we need, this is an artistic creative industry. We need artists and creatives running it, not business executives that only care about money. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> can you tell this gets me a little bit heated? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I hate this. It's anti-art. It is. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Speaking of things we possibly don't need, we're getting another Jurassic World movie? What? Now, thankfully, it's not with the same director. It's with Gareth Edwards. And I actually like Gareth Edwards as a director a lot. He did The Creator. You guys know I really like The Creator. I thought The Creator was pretty good. I thought Rogue One was pretty good, too. So he has a pretty good track record as far as movies go. So maybe this one will actually be good and, you know, not Jurassic World Dominion. So, I mean, I don't know, man. The last movie left such a bad taste in my mouth. I just, and then I'm looking at this picture here and I'm like, what is this? What is this? Is this a pyramid in the background? Is he in Vegas now? I mean, that's cool. If this, if this movie is raptors in Vegas, maybe I'll be okay with that. I just want dinosaurs, you know? I just want dinosaurs in my dinosaur movie. That's all I'm asking for. I don't want locusts. I don't want cloned girls. I want dinosaurs. So if we can get dinosaurs in this dinosaur movie, maybe it'll actually be good. Because, you know, we didn't get that in the last movie. We got locusts and clone girls. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still not over that movie. You got the freaking trio back together. You know what? This is not a review of Jurassic World Dominion. 
Um, but anyway, I just, I don't know if we need another Jurassic World movie. Even if it's with Gareth Edwards, the last one just left such a bad taste in my mouth. I just, I just don't know. Are you guys looking forward to more Jurassic World movies? Um, Blame Ozempic? What? What are you talking about? Um, you literally fell asleep during the last movie? Yeah, I don't blame you. Don't blame you at all. Um, you want to see gambling dinos? Gambling dinos. You know what? I think Vegas would actually be a pretty interesting setting for a Jurassic Park movie. Like seeing, sorry, seeing all those dinosaurs like down the strip. I think that could be really fun and very like eye catching. So I, I would be for that. Okay, Alexander says, says just kill the franchise already. They're never going to do that until they stop making money, unfortunately. The last movie, as bad as it was, still made a billion dollars. I want dinosaurs too! Thank you! Can we not just have more dinosaurs in a dinosaur movie? Like, I feel like what happened with the original Jurassic World trilogy is that we just progressively got away from dinosaurs. And I'm like, why? Why are we not focusing on the dinos? I want to I wanna freaking focus on the dinos! <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, I, don't, I just don't know if we need this. Dinosaurs on Ozempic? What are y'all talking about? Y'all are going crazy in the chat. Um, but anyway, moving on. So we're also getting more Game of Thrones! More of Game of Thrones. We're getting a spin-off of Aegon's Conquest, which is very interesting. We're getting a writer from the Batman to work on it, so that's maybe good. I don't know. I didn't really care for the Batman, but I know a lot of people did, so that's fair. Um, the series will follow the Targaryen's bloody and brutal conquest of Westeros. So it's another Targaryen show. I guess they really love their Targaryens. They are the coolest family, in my opinion. Um, I think this could be really good. I don't know. I'm a little nervous that they're getting a, a writer from the Batman and not a writer from the actual Game of Thrones series. Because I think the reason why House of the Dragon was so good is because they got a lot of the writers from actual Game of Thrones on it. So the fact that they're not getting a, a writer from Game of Thrones on this show makes me a little bit nervous because Game of Thrones is a very complex story with complex narratives and characters and whatnot. Um, so I don't know. The, the writer makes me a little bit nervous. But otherwise, I'm still very excited for it because I love, I love, um, you guys know I just, I just love Game of Thrones. So more Game of Thrones series for me, I'm happy. But I am a little bit nervous about the writer. What do you guys think about this? Rhea Rue, you're over Game of Thrones. No, I love Game of Thrones. Um, anyone here watch Game of Thrones? Anyone excited for this? Is Game of Thrones any good? It is until the last season. You've never seen a single episode. How have you guys not watched Game of Thrones? What do you guys watch? I'm tired of Game of Thrones. Okay, so, so it seems like most of you guys do not care about this show. I wonder if you guys will watch it when it actually airs, because I feel like these Game of Thrones shows are always super huge anyway. Um, I don't know. I'm excited for it, even if you guys aren't. I, I really like Game of Thrones, so. Anyway, speaking of Game of Thrones, the actress from House of the Dragon was just cast as Supergirl. I'm not surprised by this at all. She was super talented in that show. She stood out, like, a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. <laughs> In that show, I, honestly, I feel like she was a better Rhaenyra than the older Rhaenyra that we got. If you've seen House of the Dragon, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm not surprised that someone picked her up and casted her in something, because I really felt like she kind of took over that whole show, even for just the, the little bit that she was in it. So I'm glad that she got this this casting. I thought she was really good in House of the Dragon, so I think she'll be a good, uh, good Supergirl. What do you guys think about Millie Alcock as Supergirl? Okay, Astronomy says this is exciting. Okay. Um, yeah, Free Rock Command says she's going to be amazing. I agree. Um, okay, Mary Lynn Cherry agrees. She was a, bear, a better Rhaenyra. She was totally a better Rhaenyra, in my opinion. Um, Wanda likes Got. Thank you. We got some Got fans in the house. Where are my Got fans? Y'all not watch Game of Thrones? Huh? I'm so confused. Um, but anyway... Since both of you, most of you don't watch House of the Dragon or Game of Thrones, I guess I'll move on. 
So we're also getting a spinoff from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is going to focus on the valets that took their car. It's going to be called Sam and Victor's Day Off. So I think this is actually a fascinating idea. I know I don't typically like spin-offs and reboots and that sort of thing but i think the idea of following the valets and what they did with the car while they were gone sounds fascinating to me like a whole other like it does sound like a whole other movie that could be made so i don't know i think this is an interesting idea and i love ferris bueller's day off it's probably one of my top 20 favorite movies so i'm interested in this i'm curious about this what do you guys think do you think that this Ferris Bueller's Day Off spinoff is a good idea? Or do you think the movie's too old? Have you guys even seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off? What do you guys think about this? Do you think this is a bizarre idea? To make an entire movie off of the valet writers? Because I think that's a genius idea. I think that's really smart, actually. Um, okay, Brianna says, that's a no. Interesting. Nicholas says, enough. Anna Bear says, Why? <laughs> Oh no, I'm seeing a lot of whys. Oh no. <laughs> so it seems like you guys are not excited for this at all. Okay. It's just too old. Yeah. I mean, Top Gun, the sequel did really well and that first movie's old as hell. So I don't know. Maybe this movie could do well. Nostalgia. Yeah, it's definitely all about nostalgia for sure. Hello Pumpkin says, I'm convinced Hollywood is allergic to creativity. Well, when original movies come out, they don't do well. So that's why they're doing this stuff. Seems like you guys are very, very against this idea. Chris says this is 25 years too late. Yeah, it might be. It might be. Um, Wanda says, I'm Gen X, so our generation will probably watch it. Yeah, this movie will probably lean older. I only saw this movie because my mom loves it and she is Gen X. <laughs> um, but yeah. I still think this could do well. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Moving on. So uh, this is the weirdest one yet. Out of all the news we've talked about so far today, this one might be the weirdest one. So they're making four separate biopic films about the Beatles. And each Beatle will have their own movie. And they're all releasing in 2027. It's all going to be around the same event, but from a different perspective from each band member. I think that is so weird and bizarre and probably not going to work out. Why can't they just make one Beatles movie? Why do they have to make four Beatles movies and release them all in the same year? That doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, honestly, they're, that's probably not going to work out. Because with any band, there's always favorites and there's always least favorites. So that means that the favorite is going to probably do a lot better than the least favorite might flop. What happens then? I mean, this is this. I don't know. I feel like this is a very bizarre decision and probably is going to blow up in their faces. What do you guys think? I mean, why are they trying to make a connected cinematic universe out of the Beatles? That's so crazy to me. It is a lot of fluff. Yeah. Anyone interested in the Beatles? Natanya thinks they're overrated. Interesting. C.D. Wood says, this is interesting. I love the Beatles, but not biopics. Okay. I just don't know why they need to make four movies. Four! In the same year. Just make one Beatles movie, not one for each guy. I mean, it's certainly an experiment. I'm kind of curious from, like, an experimental film standpoint. But, like, as far as... I don't know. Do I think this makes business sense? No, I don't think this makes business sense at all. Um, oh God. Red Banana Green says, who likes the Beatles? Old people. <laughs> Y'all are so wild in my comments. Um, Primal says, I think I'm interested, but that's because I am close to elderly. Oh my God. <laughs> so is that who's going to watch these movies? The elderly? Oh no. I mean, that could, that could work, maybe. But I just don't see a lot of older people going to theaters anymore. In fact, they don't go to theaters anymore. That's, there's actually been a report about that. So if they're depending on, like, I don't know, they're, like, what is it, boomers? Are they, are they depending on boomers to go see this movie? Because that's going to be a problem. Not movie, movies. Um, oh, okay. Old folks and music nerds. Yeah, that's probably who's going to see these movies. 
But why four? That's what I'm saying. It's already a limited audience for just one movie. Four movies is ridiculous. I don't know. I just don't see it. I think this is going to blow up in their faces. I just, I think this is a weird decision. Uh, you did lie. You did lie. Um, <laughs> it's like a choose your own adventure thing, but with the Beatles. Yeah, it's so weird. So weird. Um, anyway, moving on. So Paramount and Peacock are reportedly in talks to merge into a single streaming service. Very fascinating. I think they should totally call it Mount Cock because I think that'd be really funny. Um, that's probably not what they're going to call it, but then, then again, they did decide to call their streaming service Peacock, so anything can happen. Um, I don't know. I feel like all of these streaming services need to start merging because we can't have like a million streaming services. It's already getting so annoying trying to figure out when to watch something and where, because you have to wonder like, oh, is it on this streaming service? Is it on this streaming service? Oh, I don't have this streaming service, so I got to do a free trial. Oh, it's so annoying. I really hate this. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm actually really glad these streaming services are starting to merge or at least want to merge. I think that's healthy. We don't need umpteen million streaming services. We need like maybe five. So I don't know. I think this is like, I think this is honestly what we should be doing. We need all these streaming services to merge. It's just becoming cable again eventually. What do you guys think about this? Left on Foria says Piemont. Piemont could be good. I still think that uh, Mount Cock is better. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I'm getting over a bad chest cold. Uh, <laughs> Nagisa says Crunchyroll is a bad idea to merge. Crunchyroll? Interesting. I'm surprised Crunchyroll is not even bigger. Because Crunchy anime is so popular right now. A uh, cock amount? Oh, God. <laughs> There's so many funny names for this. So many funny names for this. Watch them go with the most boring, strangest name possible. Um, I know this is essentially just bringing back cable, but the streaming edition. So I don't know. I just think all these streaming services need to merge because we have way too many streaming services out there right now. Like way too many. Um, speaking of changing things in the industry, physical media is going away. Freaking Best Buy has officially removed physical media from their stores, and that is huge. Remember, I made an entire video. I'm not sure if everyone has seen these vi seen that video, but I made a video going over the history of Hollywood and how uh, Hollywood used to make money. And a large way people used to make money in Hollywood was through DVD sales. So the fact that physical media is going away just cuts an entire like revenue stream away from Hollywood. So that's why it's a big deal. And this is really sad. Honestly, it's really sad because when you buy something on a streaming service, you don't really own it because not even the streaming service owns it. So like, say you bought something on YouTube, Google doesn't actually own that movie. They're just licensing it from, the, from a movie studio. So if say they lose that licensing deal, they could just get rid of all of those movies that you bought and you never, they can just totally do that even though you bought it. So that's why you really need physical media because that is the only way you actually like fully own it and no one can take it away from you unless they just steal it. So this is really sad. You guys, if you care about physical media at all, start buying your favorite movies before they disappear because I feel like it's only begun, it's going to it's only going to get harder and harder to actually like finding a find a physical movie that you're looking for because Best Buy isn't going to sell it, maybe Target won't sell it. I don't know who's next, but yeah, it's it's bad days, bad days ahead for physical media for sure. Um, yeah, Brianna, keep your DVDs, keep your DVDs. Mouth Girl says physical media forever. CD Wood says I've been building up a collection of DVDs. I actually have a lot of DVDs as well. I've kept my DVDs, like I've kept every D DVD I've ever bought since I was a kid. So I have DVDs all from back to like the 2000s. Um, so I actually have quite a collection. I just kind of stopped buying DVDs around the mid 2010s, so I got to build up my collection from the mid 2010s onward, um, just because I, I stopped buying DVDs around that time. But yeah, I got to get back to buying DVDs again for sure. Um, Pretty Princess says people with the complete Simpsons box better get safety deposit box. Wait, do they not sell the Simpsons anymore? Is that true? They don't sell this, the complete Simpsons box anymore? 
Oh man, that would suck if that's true. You own 500 movies, Shelly Lee? That's impressive. You have your own like blockbuster at home. That's very impressive. 500 movies? Good for you. Actually, I don't know how many movies I own, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's over 100 because I'm looking over at my YouTube, my, my movie stash right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's over 100. I haven't counted. Maybe I should count. Um, oh, Chris Starling is uh, going to pirate. Okay. I definitely think pirating will come back too. That's for sure. Um, but anyway, at least there was a, a little bit of good news for physical media. It says that Disney and Sony reportedly have signed a major deal for Sony Pictures to take over all of Disney's physical media production going forward. So that means that maybe Disney isn't completely getting out of the physical media realm entirely if they're making this deal with Sony. So maybe Disney will still print their movies physically for now at least. So that's, that, so that's at least good. That's one thing that's good. I don't know if every studio is going to keep doing this because I feel like at some point they're going to stop. Uh, but at least it seems like Disney is going to continue doing physical media for now. So that's at least one positive. I hope that they don't stop. But like I said, I can totally see in the future they'll stop eventually. But at least today is not the day that they stop physical media. Um, oh, hi, Bunnies Gaming. Moving on. Sorry, this is so long. Now we're getting to Avatar The Last Airbender. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about, and then I have WTF news, and then we're done. This is going to end up being like an over two hour long live stream. Oh my god. But we had a lot of stuff to talk about and catch up on, so that's why it's long. Um, but anyway, so I've been seeing lots of very concerning, worrying things about this show that I wanted to talk to you guys about because they're, they're making a lot of changes to the show from the original series, and not all of them are good. One of the things that they're saying that they're taking away was Sokka's sexist tendencies, and I feel like that is a huge mistake because the whole point of Sokka's character was that he was supposed to go through this arc of respecting women and learning how to respect women and see them as equals. That was the whole point of his arc with uh, the the uh, Kyoshi warriors, as Sokka seeing them as brave and strong and worthy as fighters. That was a huge part of his arc. So to take away the whole sexist part of his character is watering him down and neutering him in a way that I feel like is trying to appeal to the modern audience that just does not exist. And I just don't understand why they need to, why they feel the need to make these changes. I mean, why are they trying to take the edge away from a show, from a kid's show from like 2005? Why why in 2024 do we feel like we needed to sanitize everything in such a way that we take away characters' flaws? Like characters should be flawed. That's why they're interesting. It's because they're not perfect. Why are we taking away flaws from characters? That is not good writing. And I just, I think that this is really frustrating for me, personally. I was, when I saw this, I was very disappointed. What do you guys think about this? Um, oh, hi, Cheetah Viper. Uh, yeah, oh, don't say neutered. Why, you, you don't like the word neutered? <laughs> I mean, the, the original show was never saying that sexism is good. You know, media literacy is important. Context is important. The, the original show was never saying that Sokka's, Sokka's sexist tendencies were good. They never said that. They, in fact, they were saying the opposite. They, were, they repeatedly kept showing that Sokka was in the wrong, that Sokka was an idiot, that Sokka needed to learn. I feel like they did that in such an organic way, too, that the lesson went down easy. It didn't feel like they were trying to beat you over the head with lessons like a lot of modern movies do now. So I feel like they did it so well in the original show that I don't know why they're not just copying that and translating that for the live action. Why did they feel like they had to, to really strip down his character like that? I just, it bothers me. It really does. Um, Jimin's craft style. Thank you so much for the super chat. I think this is the result of pandering to the sensitive generation. Yeah, it definitely is. This is pandering to the, the to the Twitter generation, to the to the Twitter warriors who get sensitive over over everything. This is who they're trying to pander to. But I keep trying to tell Hollywood those people are in the minority. <laughs> the modern audience only exists on Twitter, so I really need them to stop doing this. Another thing that they're changing. To make Avatar The Last Airbender a serialized drama, 
Aang will not go on many detours looking for adventures like riding the elephant koi. We essentially give him this vision of what's going to happen, and he says, I have to get to the Northern Water Tribe to stop this from happening. So, the fact that they're trying to take out the detours, like the little, like, oh, he's going to ride the elephant koi like he did in the first episode. I feel like that, again, is taking away so much from Aang's character, because Aang is just a child. He didn't really want, he kept, I guess I should say, he kept trying to distract himself with other things because he wasn't really ready to take on that full responsibility yet. That's why he kept getting distracted and going on these detours. And those detours are how we got to build up character development and meet other interesting characters. Like, I feel like... I understand they only have a few episodes to work with and the original season is like 22 episodes long. I get that. But to say, like, they're they're just not going to do detours at all, I kind of feel like misses the original point of the original show entirely like the detours wasn't weren't just fluff they were actual important events that needed to happen to either build up character development or to meet new interesting parts of the world and get some world building so i feel like this the show might feel a bit shallow now if it doesn't have that extra stuff but i'm still hopeful like i said i am gonna watch the show tomorrow i'm gonna review it on friday um it's gonna be a regular show at friday so 1 p.m like 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 regular oh my god words like regular um, so make sure you're there for that. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel like this again is missing the point of the show. The, the, the detours were important. They were. What do you guys think about this? It completely misses the point of the show. Exactly, exactly. I'm really hoping this show doesn't up, end up worse than the movie, though every scene that I've seen from this movie or the show, um, looks as bad as the movie or worse, to be honest. Like, let me show you. Because there's actually a video here that I have for you comparing the show to the movie. Um, and it just does not look favorable at all. Like, look at this. I mean, I just don't know. I just don't know. I think King Boomy looks very strange and very weird. And very, well, cartoonish. And in the cartoon, it, it works fine because it's a cartoon to be... You know, being cartoonish is fine in a cartoon. But in live action, it just looks so hokey and like a skit that I'm just worried that the show just does not translate well in live action. Because I feel like, again, they are kind of doing a lot of the same shots from the original show, but it just doesn't look as good. Which makes me think, oh, does this not translate well in live action? Because it just doesn't look that great to me. I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Do you think this looks good or bad? I think this looks kind of bad, I'm not gonna lie. But again, it's exactly like the show, so I'm just like, maybe it just doesn't translate? I don't know. I'm very nervous about this show now, but I'm definitely gonna give it a try tomorrow. Do you guys think that actually looks good? SNL version? No. I mean, it is more cartoonish than the live action, yeah. It could have been good, no. Ray sure is just laughing at it. Um, oh, you think it's dead on arrival? I actually think the show could do really well just because the popularity of the original series is still strong, but I'm just not sure if people are going to like it. I know, King Boomy, though, he, he looks kind of crazy. He looks crazy. Yeah, the makeup for Boomy does not look great. I'll agree with that. He just kind of looks strange. Like, it just does not translate well, is what I'm saying. Doesn't translate well at all. Uh, but anyway... I'm gonna get to WTF news and then we will be done. Sorry this, this stream was so long. Um, but anyway, WTF news! I missed this! I had to talk about this because I was like, what the heck is this? But Josh Brolin! You guys know Josh Brolin, right? He was in the first Dune, but he's also freaking Thanos! The actor who plays Thanos wrote a poem for Timothy Chalamet on the set of Dune 2. Do you guys want me to read this poem to you? Because what the F? This is his poem. Okay. Uh, hold on. Your, your face is etched by adolescence. Your cheekbones jump toward uh, what are youth-laden eyes that slide down. A prominent nose and onto lips of a certain poetry. And the way you hold my gaze makes me fear my own age. What? Because something in me tells me you're going to offer me something. <laughs> what? What are you going to offer him? 
Um, and for now, I'm not sure. It's going to be something. I want any more. What? What is this? What is this? Why is Josh Brolin like, I want something from him. He's gonna give me something. <laughs> he makes me fear for my own age. What? I'm sorry, but this poem was wild. This is real. This is real. Thanos wrote this himself, y'all. His face is etched by adolescence. Your cheekbones jump toward what are youth laden eyes that slide down. A prominent nose and onto lips of a certain poetry. What is this? I'm sorry. I, I read this poem like 10 times in a row, like laughing maniacally to myself because I was like, what the F is this? <laughs> also, this part is wild because something in me tells me you are going to offer me something. What? What? <laughs> what? What are you offering him? What do you want from him, firstly? What do you want from Timothy, huh? Huh? What do you want from him? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this poem was wild. This poem was wild. It's, it's, it's filled with sexual frustration. Um, just filled with it. Um, so I guess Josh Brolin has a, a bit of a crush on Timothy Chalamet. I don't know. If that's what I'm getting from this poem. No judgment. No judgment at all. Um, but that's definitely the vibe I'm getting from this poem. Um, Timothy, you need a restraining order? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. So funny. But, um, anyway. <laughs> what do you want? Because something in, in me, something in me is, tells me you're going to offer me something. What? What in the world? I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't, um, anyway. Oh, wow. I f totally forgot that I didn't have my lower image and my lower third. Where'd it go? Oh, no. Um, but anyway, that's my live stream. I, I told you guys I am back. I am so sorry that I left, but I think I needed that break. Truly, I needed that break. It, it made me realize how much I miss this and how much I do enjoy this and how much I like doing these streams. So I think that break did me well. Uh, again, I'm going to be having another stream on Friday where I'm going to review the first couple episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. So if you want to see my thoughts on that, make sure you're there on Friday. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be live streams for now. Just three live streams a week. That's it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. This has been great. I'm glad to be back and doing these streams. I'm so sorry this was so long, but we had a lot to keep up, uh, catch up on. So yeah. I think I need to go because I can't talk anymore. I've been talking for over two hours. Um, but anyway, thank you all. 